Hello, welcome again to a story for you. Today is a happy, sad day. We are reading the very last chapter, chapter 13, in our book, Little House in the Big Woods. And then we're going to go on to um, read some stories by a lady named Beatrix Potter. And I think you'll find there are stories about animals, and they're very cute. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> anyway, let's finish Little House by Laura Ingalls Wilder with pictures by Garth Williams. A deer in the wood. The grass was dry and withered and the cows must be taken out of the woods and kept in the barn to be fed. And all the bright colored leaves were dull brown when the cold rains began to fall. There was no more playing under the trees, but Paul was in the house when it rained, and he began again to play the fiddle after supper. And the rains stopped, and the weather grew colder. In the early mornings, everything sparkled with frost. Let me show you the chapter picture here. Pretty dear. Maybe you see deer by your house. There are so many of them. The days were growing short, and a little fire burned all day in the cook stove to keep the house warm. Winter was not far away. The attic and the cellar were full of good things once more, and Laura and Mary had started to make patchwork quilts, and everything was beginning to be snug and cozy again. One night, when he came in from doing his chores, Pa said that after supper he would go to his deer lick and watch for a deer. There would be no fresh meat in the little house in spring for the fawns were growing up. Oh, I'm sorry, there had been no fresh meat. So Pa would go hunting again. Pa had made a deer lick in an open space in the woods with trees nearby in which he could sit and watch it. The deer lick was a place where deer came to get salt. And when they found a salty place in the ground, they came to lick it, and that's why it's called a deer lick. Pa had made one out of the sprinkling salt and sprinkled it all over the ground. And after supper, Pa took his gun and went into the woods, and Laura and Mary went to sleep without any stores or music. As soon as they woke up in the morning, they ran to the window. There were no deer hanging in the trees. Pa had never gone, um, had never before gone out to get a deer and not come home with one. Laura and Mary did not know what to think. All day, Pa was busy banking the little house and the barn with dead leaves and straw held by stones to keep out the cold. There he is putting a straw around the bottom of the house. Very smart. It's called insulation. The weather grew colder all day, and that night there was once more a fire in the hearth, and the windows were shut tight, and the chink and chinked for the winter. I don't know what that means. After supper, Pa took Laura on his knee, and Mary sat close in her little chair, and Pa said, Now I'll tell you why I had no fresh meat today. When I went to the deer lake, I climbed up into that big oak tree and I found a place on a branch where I was comfortable and could watch the deer lake. And I was near enough to shoot any animal that came to it. And my gun was loaded and ready on my knee. And there I sat and waited for the moon to rise and light the clearing. And I was a little tired from chopping wood all day yesterday and I must have fallen, fallen asleep. And I found myself opening my eyes. The big round moon was just rising, and I could barely see it between the bare branches on the trees low in the sky. And right up against it, I saw a deer standing. His head was up, and he was listening. And his great branch of horns stood out over his head, and he was dark against the moon. It was a perfect shot. 
but he was so beautiful and he looked so strong and free and wild that I couldn't kill him. I sat there and looked at him until he bounded away into the dark woods. And then I remembered that Ma and my little girls were waiting for me to bring home some good fresh venison and I made up my mind the next time I would shoot. After a while, a big bear came lumbering into the open, for he was fat from feasting on berries and roots and grubs all summer, <clears throat> and he was nearly as big as two bears. His head swayed from swat, side to side as he went on all fours. He came to the clear space in the moonlight until he came to a rotten log, and he smelled it and listened, and then he pawed it apart and sniffed at the broken pieces and ate up all the fat little white grubs. He stood there on his hind legs, perfectly still, looking all around him. He seemed to be suspicious that something was wrong. He was trying to see or smell what it was. And there's, he was a perfect mark to shoot at, but I was so interested in watching him, and the woods were so peaceful in the moonlight, I forgot all about my gun, and I did not even think of shooting him, and then he waddled away into the woods. This will never do, I thought. I'll never get any meat this way. I settled myself in the tree and waited again. This time I was determined to shoot the next game I saw. The moon had risen higher in the moonlight and was bright in a little open space and all around in the shadows were dark in the trees. And after a while, a doe and her yearling, fawn, came walking daintily to the shadows. They were not afraid at all. They walked over to the place where I had sprinkled the salt and they picked up and licked a little of it. And then they raised their hands and looked at each other and the fawn stepped over and stood beside the doe. And they stood there together looking at the woods and the moonlight and their large eyes were shining and soft. And I just sat there looking at them until they walked away into the shadows. And then I came down from my tree and came home. Laurel whispered in his ear. I'm glad you didn't shoot them. <clears throat> Mary said, we can eat bread and butter. Pa lifted Mary out of her chair and hugged them both. You're my good girls, he said. And now it's bedtime. Run along while I get my fiddle. When Laura and Mary had said their prayers and were tucked snugly under the trundle covers, Pa was sitting in the firelight with his fiddle, and Ma had blown out the lamp because she did not need its light. On the other side of the hearth, she was swaying gently in her rocking chair, and her knitting needles flashed in and out of the sock that she was knitting. The long winter evenings of the firelight and the music had come again. Pa's fiddle wailed while Pa was singing, Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I'm going to California, the coal dust for to see. And then Pa began to play the song of the old Grimes. But he did not sing the words when he, he had sung when Ma was making cheese. These words were different. Pa's sweet, strong voice was singing softly. Shall old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. Shall old acquaintance be forgot and the days of old lang syne. And the days of old lang syne, my friend, and the days of old lang syne. Shall old acquaintance be forgot in the days of old Lang Syne. When the fiddle had stopped singing, Laura called out softly, What are the days of old Lang Syne, Pa? These are the days a long time ago, Laura, Pa said. Go to sleep now. But Laura lay awake and listened a little while to Pa's fiddle, playing softly in the lonely sound of the wind in the big woods. And she looked at Pa, sitting on the bench by the hearth, and the firelight gleaming in his brown hair and beard and glistening on his honey brown fiddle. And she looked at Ma, gently rocking and knitting. And she thought to herself, this is now. And she was glad that the cozy house and Pa and Ma and the firelight and the music were now. They could not be forgotten, she thought, because now is now and it can never be a long time ago. Boys and girls, that is the end of the first book in the Little House series. 
and I hope you enjoyed it. I so enjoyed reading it, and the rest of the series is just as good, which I promise we will read a little more later. But I'm going to go on to Beatrix Potter and read all about the bunnies and Benjamin Bunny and Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail and Peter Cottontail and Mr. and Mrs. McGregor. And I hope you will come back and enjoy that. Thank you. That's all for our story today. Be sure to let your parents know to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments that you want to talk to me about the story or questions that you have or information that you have, you can tell your parents and they can put it in the comments. And then if they set up their phone or their computer, when they subscribe, then they can click on the bell and that'll tell you every time I put a new video up. I enjoy getting this time with you. Bye-bye.